Hey everybody, welcome back to Bravo Bassin, and holy hell, is it hot in Virginia. So, the past couple weeks, we've had tons of rain, and now it's quit raining, and now it's hot and humid, and just utterly ridiculous. I went out and tried to fish yesterday, almost ended up with heat exhaustion, almost passed out, barely made it home. I literally came in the house, dropped my tackle box, my rods and reels right in the middle of the floor, um, peeled off all my clothes, grabbed a bottle of water, my son grabbed it for me, gave it to me, and like crawled naked to the shower and crawled in there and turned on the cold water and laid there drinking a bottle of water trying to cool myself down and ended up having to lay down for a couple hours. So while you guys are out there fishing, make sure you're hydrating really well. Be really careful about it because it can sneak up on you. That heat exhaustion, heat stroke, sneak up on you real, real fast and you'll be out before you know it. And um, I've actually had a couple issues this year and it has a lot to do with my medical issues. And so I have to be really careful about the, the times when I'm out and when I'm fishing and stuff. So I try to fish really early in the morning really late in the evening and I actually it was like 4 35 o'clock when I first went out to try to fish and um I didn't make it 45 minutes I mean it was that bad and it's still that bad and the reason why I'm sweating is because I just shot another video um about MEP spinners so check that video out because it's actually pretty cool but I had to go out and catch a fish because I wanted to show you that those MEP spinners that I'm, I'm talking about actually catch bass so I ran down to my little pond behind my house for about 20 minutes cast it around caught a bass so I could shoot it for that video and I was dying I mean I actually had a bottle of water with me and guzzled it up and I was like out there just about 20 minutes man and it was just ridiculous ridiculous so I'm trying to cool off in my house got the ceiling fan going in there and I'm actually shooting this video in my Star Wars room and um that's probably going to be for story time I'll tell you about how I ended up getting into all this and having all the Star Wars stuff actually probably be a pretty cool story but it doesn't have nothing to do with fishing but um pretty cool story I've done some pretty cool stuff when it comes to Star Wars and Star Wars universe and if you guys are into Star Wars hey man throw a message down there and tell me what you do if you're into it and um I'll actually hook you up and show you guys some really cool stuff that I've done um pretty neat but on with that today we're going to talk about top water lures and I'm going to show you the top water lures that I like and the top water lures I like to fish so I'm going to show you my box first and let you guys see what I have in there and then I'm gonna talk about each lure so you know you know let, let me let you guys check out my box okay everybody so this is my top water box and all the top waters that I like to throw I just wanted to show you the whole box so you can see the different lures that I have in there um, I love throwing all these and all these catch me some fish and um, we're gonna talk about each one individually and um, tell you what I think about them and how much I like them and and uh, kinda how you fish them and then we'll just go from there alright so that was my box and um, you can see what I fish and now we're gonna talk about each individual lure that I like to fish and um, my favorites out of this box so the first thing I want to talk about and for those of you guys that fish top water I'm sure you already have these in your box and for those of you guys that don't fish a lot in top water you need to get some of this stuff in your box because top water bites amazing I mean it's just freaking amazing I honestly it's my favorite bite in the world and I throw top water religiously I have a top water tied on every day I cast it every day I throw it in the mornings I'll throw it in the afternoons I'll throw it in the evenings because I love top water bites and in the mornings and evenings the best but you can still get top water in the afternoon so it doesn't ever hurt to have a top water ready to chuck and if you watch a lot of these other fishing guys they'll tell you the same thing so the first thing I will talk about is frogs now I have frogs and I caught my one of my um, Virginia State citations this year on this frog right here this black frog it's a lunker hunt and this one's a lunker hunt and I caught a monster six and a half pounder that was almost 25 inches long um, the fish was so long that you know when I, I ended up having it mounted but when I had it mounted um, the taxidermist was even said that you know that fish in the fall or the spring was probably 10 pounds and um, if you go check out my video where I go pick up my PB bass, you can see a video of her and see how big that fish was, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But that fish crushed this black one. I mean, just crushed this black one. It was an overcast day. Um, I pitched this up near a little island at this pond, and it just hammered. I literally threw it out there. It landed. I let it settle in the water. I twitched it twice, and that thing just exploded on it. So with that being said... The way you fish these things is what I like to do. I like to throw it out there, let it settle, let those ripples kind of settle out, 
And then I'll give it a couple twitches, let it sit. Give it a couple twitches, let it sit. Give it a couple twitches, let it sit. And then sometimes I'll swim it a little bit further, then let it stop. I always do a, a pop, pop, pause, or pop, 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 pause, or a pop, pause, and kind of just make it do little different things and stuff. And that motion usually will get the fish to strike. And when they hit it, man, they just pummel it. The other thing I like to do with these, and I learned this through watching some of the other guys' channels, is I started trimming up the legs a little bit, because these legs will come pretty long. And I usually trim about a half inch to an inch off, make them about this long. And the reason why they do that, and the reason why I do it, is because a lot of times the bass will come up and they'll strike the legs and they won't get to the lure. If you trim it up a little bit, you still get the leg action, but they'll get a hold of it. When they grab a hold of that and that squishes down, boy, you're on it. You're on it like Donkey Kong. Now let's talk colors. Um, I fish two colors right now primarily. I'm probably going to pick up a few others in the future, but I fish black with a little yellow on it, and then I fish this green one. He has chartreuse belly, and then he's got like a green and a darker green in the spots. This actually is what the frogs look like in the ponds that I fish and the lakes that I fish around here. So it's a great match the hatch frog, and it catches fish. This is also like the medium size. They have one that's a little bit smaller, then they have a, a little bit bigger one, then they have a real big one. And this is kind of like the in-between. I really enjoy throwing this size. I mean, it's a really good size. It catches good fish um, and just great lures. And if you don't have any frogs in your box, you should at least get a frog. And if you're just going to buy one, you didn't want to buy more than one, I would probably most likely recommend either this black one or this color. Um, either one of those would be good. The reason why I would probably go more with the black is because you can fish that in clear water, muddy water, overcast days, and um, it gives that shadowy profile and they'll hit it. Because they basically, you got to think, the, the bass is looking at the belly. He's looking at the bottom side of the frog because he's looking up. So that's what he's looking at. And this gives a good profile, and it's probably a good all-around one. And I've caught bass on this black one, whether it's sunny or it's cloudy out. So you can't go wrong. I've actually caught them on both, so you really can't go wrong. Um, other color I get is kind of a white one, maybe. Um, that's probably what I'm going to pick up next, something like that. But great colors. If you're only going to have two, then these were the two that I'd have. So let's move on and talk about the next, next ones I want to. I like the fish. So... Um, any of you guys fish spooks or anything type like a spook my next favorite one that I love to fish and this I got in my mystery tackle box that came um, a couple months ago and I love this thing this is a lucky craft top water it's like a spook you fish it like a spook you jerk it along it does this snaky swimming action like that you just kind of get in a rhythm and um, when you throw it out there you can kind of you can just cast it a little ways out and kind of figure, figure out the rhythm real quick and then chuck it out there this thing will cast a mile it's got super shark hooks it's got a really great rattle in it and this is just an amazing, amazing lure. It's black with yellow spots, if you can't see that really well. And just this thing will crush fish. The first time I got it, the first time I got to go out and fish it, I just took this lure and that's all I fished. And I was hammering bass. Boom, boom, boom. Just crushing bass. It was an evening bite and it was amazing. Now a funny story about this thing is I went fishing the next day and I actually lost this lure. I got it hung up on a log, I was bank fishing and I broke it off and I didn't think I was gonna be able to get it back. And about a half hour later, a kayaker came paddling down to where I was at and asked me how the fishing was. And I told him what was going on. I'd caught a bunch of fish and then I told him what happened with this lure. And he was nice enough to paddle back over to uh, where I lost the lure and um, get it back for me. And I actually did a video. There, he's actually in one of my videos. If you check out my Ruritan Lake Fishing video, you'll see where he went out. The gentleman went and got the lure back for me. And I appreciate that because this thing's expensive. These Lucky Crafts are like $16. And um, it's something probably I normally wouldn't spend that much on when I go to the bait store. But the cool thing about Mystery Tackle Box is they hook you up with some really awesome expensive lures that work good. And I love this thing. And now that I've fished it, I would spend the $16 because if I lose this bad boy, I'm buying another one. So that's that. Um, the, other ones that and the other one that's similar to that that I like to fish is a spook type. This is more of a torpedo type thing. It's got rattles in it. You fish it the same way. Um, I just picked out this color because I like this color. I figured it was a good color to, to, to crush some fish on, um, and it is. It catches a lot of bass. It'll even catch stripers when they're hitting top water. Um, I've seen guys catch muskies on these things and pike and pickerel and all kinds of other fish, um, but it's great bass lure, small mouth, large mouth, just a great all-around lure. Um, they make them in tons of different colors. I mean, it's always good to buy different stuff, I mean, for different, you know, whatever you know, the weather's doing and what's going on, depending on the day, depends on what types you're going to throw. But um, great lure. That's like, you know, I picked that up as a kind of a backup to my Lucky Craft and a really awesome lure. Now we're going to move on to poppers. Now I have a couple different types of poppers that I fish and I have one of them that's actually become one of my favorites. I just recently got that in a mystery tackle box. So and that's going to be the last one I show you. They come in different shapes, sizes, all kinds of stuff. Um, you just have to figure out what you like and what you like to do, what, what, what you like to throw, sorry. So the first one I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you a couple different sizes. 
Um, I'm going to show you these two. The first one is a bone colored popper. It's a little bit smaller, but it's got rattles in it, a little bit smaller hooks. And I've crushed a lot of bass on this. They love this thing, and, and they'll just mow it down a cup. Big ones, small ones, you name it. Great lure, awesome lure. And then the next one, this one's almost kind of a bass color, except he doesn't have the, the coloring down the side. He's got a black and green top. With it. As it gets lighter, it's like a whitish silver, a little orange bill. And you can see the different profiles. One's a little bit bigger than the other one. Now, what's really cool about this little one is this one's pretty heavy, and so I can chuck this on my bait casters without a problem, and it'll cast a mile, and I like that. It's got some pretty heavy weights in it, and then this one casts really great on a bait caster. Um, you can cast it on your spinner reel if you want, but these two I actually throw on my bait casters, and they do fine. And um, if you don't know how to throw a popper, I mean, there's tons of videos out there, but basically, you just you just give it a couple twitches, and it's pop, pop, and it'll, like, push the water up and make a little explosion with water and really disperse the water, and you'll just do, like, you know, pop, pop, pop you know kind of pauses and stuff and the bass will crush them and these two are great 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 and now i'm going to show you another one that's a little bit bigger than this guy so we're going to put this one back in the box i'm going to show you the next one i got and these are all um these guys are all like strike kings so uh i think they're strike kings strike kings or rapalas i don't remember but um a bunch of different companies make poppers just find ones you like and get them so the next one is this one and if you can see the difference you can see this this one's a little bit bigger than that one a little bit bigger hooks, a little bit bigger presentation. This one's actually white with a little bit of silver, kind of represents like a shad on the top of the water. Um, another great lure catches them. Um, I have a few different sizes, just depending on what I'm fishing. Um, if I'm throwing, I usually like to throw big because I'm trying to catch bigger fish, but if they're not biting or I'm not being able to hook them, I need to go a little smaller, then I shrink down the sizes. And um, it's always good to have a couple different colors. I mean, it's always good to have a few different colors depending on what the weather is and what's going on outside. It just depends on what you want to throw, you know, and try some different stuff. I mix it up. I try different things, figure out what's catching and what's kind of, and now what I have is I've narrowed down what really catches fish for me on top water, and that's kind of what I take with me. Now, the last popper I want to show you is the Booyah popper. Now, this is in a bone color. It's got some black stripes, red eyes, and it's got this really awesome bill on it. And this thing, and it also has the little um, feathery tail on it, which gives it some really cool action. Now, this thing is freaking amazing and this thing will crush bass this thing you can fish like a popper or you can fish like a crankbait and when this thing is cranked through the water it really has a great action swimming action like that and what i like to do is i like to pop it and then make it swim a little bit so i'll give it a pop and then i'll do a double pop and then that'll pull it under the water and then sometimes i'll do a, a pop and then a double pop when it goes down then i'll crank it a little bit and then let it come back up and that action the bass will just crush it i mean they just pulverize this thing I mean, I've had this thing blown out of the water. It's an amazing lure. It catches bass. And if you haven't tried one of these Booyah poppers with the lip, I highly recommend you getting out and buying one. The one thing I will say is this is a really light lure. It's hard to throw on a bait caster. Um, I have done it, but it's just really tough. It doesn't, it's really light. It's got some pretty decent rattles in it, but it's not that heavy. So it's way better to throw on a spinning rod with the light line now i think if you went lighter line on a bait caster you could probably check like if you were throwing like eight pound test you could probably get this out there pretty good but i have like um anywhere from 10 to 14 on and well 12 to 14 on my bait casters i think i think all of them are now 14 pound and it just won't go that far and i'm actually going to probably go back down to 12 and 10 um but yeah if you aren't trying one of these you need to pick one of these up and give it a whirl i actually want to pick up a few more of them i'm hoping they make them in a little bit larger size i haven't really looked at it yet because i just got this thing um but this is a great great lure i definitely recommend picking this up i mean if i was going to pick up any one of my poppers that i have right now this would be the popper that i would buy if i could only get one i would buy this booyah popper that would be the one i would get so with that being said we're going to move on to my last top water and my favorite top water of all all my favorite one at all. And if you haven't figured that one out what it is yet, um, you should know it is the Whopper Plopper. The Whopper Plopper is one of those amazing top water lures I've ever fished. These things catch fish. And I hope you guys can see those. I'm trying to get it a little closer. I have a white one. And then this one's actually um, uh, perch color. And these things are freaking amazing. These are the 90s. They make 75, 90 and it's either 125 or 150 or maybe a 125 and 150 i can't remember but they have like four different sizes and they have ones that get real big i like the 90s it's a great profile it catches i mean i i literally catch you know every size fish i mean the first time i ever got one of these i bought this perch one 
I went out and the first fish I caught on a Wapa Plopper was a three pound largemouth. It crushed it. And if you guys want to check that out, I actually did a video. It's called the Whopper Plopper Challenge. Go check that out on my YouTube channel. And all I did, I went down to, to a pond with one rod and this Whopper Plopper tied on and that's all I fished and I crushed a bunch of bass on it. Crushed a bunch of bass on it. You cannot go wrong with this. And this thing will catch largemouth and smallmouth. I mean, it'll catch all kinds of fish. And I've seen guys hook up northern pike with these. I've even seen guys catch muskies with these and all kinds of fish. So busting top water. So um, you can't go wrong with this. I mean, just a great, great lure. There's several different colors. Um, right now I have my perch one and I have my white one. I want to pick up a black one and a bone color. And now I want to get one that's a little bit more on the clear side. And then I'll be good to go. I'm actually going to end up with a dedicated box to Whopper Ploppers because they have so many different cool ones. I'd like to have a whole box that's just nothing but these lures. That's how much I like these things. Now one of the things I will tell you about this is that if you get any kind of snags or weeds on this, it'll quit spinning. And one of the things you got to remembers that this tail if you get weeds in it and it does get weeds caught up in here sometimes that'll stop spinning and then it'll make the body spin and when the body spins it actually will tank and twist your line up and this thing will booger up your line like no business if you're constantly doing that so i learned a nifty little trick i learned it from matt and tim from tactical bass and if you guys haven't checked out their channel you really should go check out their channel because they put out some really good content really good fishermen and i hope i run into those guys one day and get to go fish with them um but i learned a little trick and it's called putting a little um, swivel on it and a snap ring. So if you look right here, I don't know if you can see, I have a little ring right there and then I have a small swivel attached to it. And what that does is keeps that lure from spinning like that. So if you get it hooked up, it won't spin your line out. So if this starts spinning, it's not twisting your line up and tearing up your line where you're having to change it all the time. And it's a great technique. I think this is a number 10 swivel I have on there, it's small. And then it's a small snap ring. Um, I forget what size that is. I'd have to look back in my box. But if you go check out um, Matt and Tim, um, I think it was Tim that did a video on it, a tactical bass in, and he tells you what size that he's using for his. But um, it's a pretty small one. I actually had bought a little bit larger one, but I had to downsize because it was a little too big for it. But I, you know, just experimented. I found the size that works really good. This allows the bait to still do what it's supposed to do, but this also allows me to not destroy my line when I'm fishing a whopper plopper. And I definitely recommend you doing it. It's not a, it's a cheap fix. It costs you a couple bucks. You can get like, you get like eight of, you get eight of these and you get eight of those little snap rings in a package for a few dollars. And, um, you put that on there and it makes that lure just perform perfectly. If you get some weeds on it, it's not going to twist up your line because you will get weeds on there. And one of the things you got to make sure when you're fishing this thing is where that joint is, make sure you keep that thing cleared out because if you don't, this thing will booger up and it'll twist up your line and make a mess. You know? That's the one thing about this. You can't fish this in any type of cover. You can fish it over it fishing over trees and stuff like that or you're fishing over stuff you can fish it over it but there's a bunch of junk on the water you definitely want to try to avoid that so this lure works because it'll quit spinning this will quit spinning and, and that's what this is supposed to do this little thing is supposed to spin around and it goes plop 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 it makes this really awesome sound and you got to figure out the right speed there's a certain speed that you crank them at and when you crank them it'll you'll you'll figure it out when you're casting out you'll see if you if you Reel it slow, you reel it fast, you'll kind of figure out how fast you need to burn it to get that really great sound. And there's a there's a, there's a sweet spot for these. And I found that out. There's a sweet spot for these where it just makes this perfect sound. It's nice and, and the, the right loudness and everything. Just amazing. And if you don't have a whopper plopper in your tackle box, you need to go out and buy one of these and put in your tackle box. And if I could only have one, it would probably be this perch one that I would start with because that's the one I started with. And I've caught bass on this thing, whether it's sunny, whether it's overcast, it doesn't matter what you know is going on with the weather, this thing catches fish. And um, I highly recommend these. And I'm going to have, like I said, I'm going to end up with a whole box full of these just dedicated to Whopper Ploppers. I like them so much. They're amazing amazing top water lures and there's a lot of videos out there like i said i made a video it's called the whopper plopper challenge go check it out um i'm actually using this perch one and uh you know hit the like button on that thing too and um definitely if you guys are fishing top water a whopper plopper needs to be in your box i mean there's just no ands if your box whopper ploppers get it done so with that being said um we're gonna end this video um, i hope you guys enjoyed it um that's my top water stuff that's what I like to fish. We all have our preferences. I've just come to find that those are the lures that catch me the most bass and I enjoy fishing it. I actually received a Lunker Hut prop frog that I just got in my mystery tackle box in June. And um, I haven't got to fish it a whole whole bunch. 
Um, I've had it out a couple times. I got a couple hits, but didn't catch anything. Um, it looks really good. It swims really good in the water. It's another one that you can't get caught up in any weeds because it just totally screws up the props and everything. But if you're burning it beside lily pads or beside some structure, it's really good. And um, it looks amazing. I think it's going to crush some bass eventually. Um, hopefully, I can get out and do a video on it when it is crushing some bass. But uh, I've seen other guys do the videos, and it looks really good. So pretty cool lure to have. It's actually tied on one of my rides. That's why I didn't show it today. And, um, you know, hopefully that one's going to do good too, and, and I like it. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down there, hit that thumbs up like button and hit that little ding dong button over there in the corner that, um, gives you my notifications. I'm putting up videos every Monday and Wednesday now, and I'm trying to put up as best content I can. If you guys have got any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the, the link down below. Um, I'm always up for learning stuff, hearing new things. If you guys live anywhere near the Charlottesville Richmond area, Hit me up, man. We'll go fishing. I love to fish with other guys. I love learning new things from other guys and learning stuff that I didn't know to fish. That's how I learned about the Whopper Plopper was other guys fishing it. And they're like, man, you need to try this. And I'm um, watching videos, too. And um, I went out and tried it, man. And, and no joke, that thing catches fish. I mean, it just crushes fish. Now, I will tell you, it's it's pricey. I mean, the, the 90s are like 13, 12 something, 13 bucks. And then the bigger ones are a little bit more expensive. So it's a little bit more expensive lure, but it's worth it. It's well worth it. Um, definitely get one. So anyway, um, appreciate you guys watching and, uh, do yourself a favor, get out there, get your lines wet, catch some fish.